What up, African world? It's your boy, Home Team here. I'm back at it with another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And today we're going to talk about Southern Africa and the Lunda Empire. The Lunda Empire was a very well organized empire and a very complex political structure that existed in Central and Southern Africa in the Congo region. But before we speak about the London Empire, we have to talk about the empire that came before it, the Luba Empire. Both of these empires are well known for their legendary figures, Kalala of the Luba Empire and Shabinda of the London Empire. Their legendary oral tradition goes as follows. Around 1500, there appeared a legendary man named Kongolo, or whom some called Rainbow. Kongolo migrated to the area from the northeast, and when he arrived in this foreign land, he subdued the various peoples and chiefdoms he encountered, introducing several structural changes. Kongolo was the founder of the Luba Kingdom. After some time passed, a man named Mbili came and settled in the area and married Kongolo's two sisters, but eventually this caused tension between himself and Kongolo. Mbili's wife bore a son named Kalala, the warrior. But Mbili left and returned to his home country. Kalala quickly gained success conquering regions for his uncle Kongolo and rose to fame. Kongolo became increasingly jealous of Kalala's popularity and tried numerous times to kill him. He tried sending Kalala off to battle in the front lines to conquer neighboring people, hoping he would die in the effort. But each time Kalala came back victorious and was beloved by the people all the more. Eventually, bitterly frustrated and angered, Kongolo devised a plan to trap Kalala. In tradition of the people in the region, after land was conquered, the leader would dance to celebrate the victory. Thus, in the center of the dancing ground, Kongolo dug a pit, and at the bottom he planted spears and stakes. He covered over the top with mats and sand so the pit would be invisible to the naked eye. Returning from battle and readying himself to dance for the king, Kalala was weary as he was warned by the spirits to watch the beat of the drums. The drums were tone drums that were used to mimic the tones of human speech. The skillful drummers always weave messages into their music during dance. Thus Kalala heard the drum tunes and became aware of the trap and simply danced around it. Kalala, knowing the wrath of Kongolo was upon him, returned to his father's land. He gathered a strong army and defeated Kongolo in battle and usurped the throne of Luba. Now after the Luba Empire was born, the Lunda Empire came right after it as it was birthed from Luba. A wandering hunter from the Luba Empire sought to explore the land south of the Luba Empire and he ended up building a new empire himself. His name is Shabinda. The story goes as follows. A king named Kondi of the Lunda Empire had two sons and a daughter named Lueji. Kondi's sons were completely incompetent and his anger boiled against them so much so that he declared that none of them would inherit the throne. Thus, his daughter Lueji inherited the throne and received the bracelet of power called Rukon. After her father died, Luigi became queen. Furious at his decree, Luigi's brothers left and later founded the Chokwe kingdoms. Luigi was hesitant to marry anyone because of the rivalries her choice might cause among the ethnic groups in the region. One day, the queen's aides spotted a man on the outskirts of the kingdom. Upon first glance of him, they realized how extraordinarily handsome he was, reporting back to the queen that he was tall and dark. His name was Shabinda, and Queen Luigi fell in love with him. Shabinda told the queen that he was exploring the southern region, but he was never returning home to Luba. The queen married Shabinda. Shabinda Luanga introduces the Luba rituals, culture, and religion, which the Lunda adopt. Luigi rules by handling law and order, while Shabinda leads his army and conquers the surrounding people, including those of Luigi's brothers, the Chakwe, and establishes 
the Lunda Empire. Queen Luweji was too sick to rule, hence she gave the Rukan, the bracelet of power, to Shabinda. Shabinda is now proclaimed emperor and takes the title of king. He introduces the Luba's principles of sacred kingship and rule by council. His mystical powers gave him the status of a god king and identified him as a solar deity. Under his rule, the Lunda Empire even surpassed the Luba Empire. Shabinda's son then became the first Maata Yavo, or ruler of Lunda. Now the Lunda Empire was an African confederation of states which is today in the Democratic Republic of Congo. It also encompassed northeastern Angola and Zambia. The paramount ruler Mayat Yava is still recognized today as a traditional ruler in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The Mayat Yav was advised by a council of royal dignitaries. Local chiefs exercised a considerable amount of autonomy provided they paid tribute to the Mayat Yav. Conquered chiefs were kept in place and given the title Want. A small police corps enforced the king's orders around the capital and traveling chiefs or Kawata acted as the king's envoys to the local chiefs collecting tribute. The most distant chiefs were visited annually. These officials checked caravans, escorted foreign travelers, and warned chiefs whose tribute was late or inadequate. Minimal interference by the central government in the affairs of the provinces helped to keep the peace in a system where central control would have been seen as exploitation. One important state official was a woman, mother of the nation, whose job was to entertain state visitors. Initially, the Lunda were too small in number to survive by farming so they raided neighboring villages to put captives to work in their fields. They later colonized remote villages and forced them to pay crop tributes to the Lunda king. Upon conquering different ethnic groups in the region, they sold their war captives as slaves, gaining expansion and economic wealth. The succession of rule in the Lunda empire was matrilineal in nature, meaning the royal bloodline came through the woman, not the man. Lunda traded with both Arabs on the Indian Ocean and the Portuguese in the Atlantic. According to Lunda religion, the chief god was called Zambi. And Zambi is said to have a particular concern for the welfare of the poor. He was the protector of the poor. Ironically enough, the kingdom of Lunda came to an end in the 19th century when it was invaded by the Chakwi, which according to oral history were the descendants of the brothers of Queen Luweji of Lunda. Equally ironic was the fact that Chakwi rulers themselves sponsored imagery that positioned as legitimate heirs to an already established Lunda ideology. The Chakwi began to create impressive artistic creations that embodied the oral traditions of the Lunda people themselves, hinting at the similarities between their cultures and origin. The Chakwi rulers even idolized the Lunda founder, Shabinda. In fact, they are known for their artistic wood carvings of Shabinda. He is usually portrayed with an extravagant hairstyle depicting his royal status, a medicine horn as a symbol of his mystical knowledge, and a staff which shows his rulership. While any Chakwe man can hunt, one could pursue initiation into a society of professional hunters. Aspiring Chakwe hunters were called children of Shabinda. While not very popular, the Luba and the Lunda empires have a very intriguing oral tradition. Testament to the success of their very complex societal structure, a lot of the elements of this societal structure still survives even to this day. But I'm all out guys, it's your boy Home Team. Special shout out to the great Griot. Check her channel out in the link below. And if you guys want to gain full access to African history courses, I offer them on Patreon.com. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.